Hello, I'm Terry Davis, founder of the Elevate to Impact Academy, where our mission is to train and empower one million spirit-led entrepreneurs to elevate and exponentially grow their businesses for eternal impact. And that includes you. So hello again. Again, I'm Terry Davis, and I am excited about the opportunity to be with you today. I hope you like my uh, homemade graphics. My production team sent this to me uh, and asked me to incorporate it on the screen. Couldn't figure out how to do that, so I just basically put it in front of the camera and let everybody see it. So, uh, uh, and plus, I'm at home right now, just like most of you are probably. Uh, but anyway, that's my graphics, and I want to say thanks to my graphics team. Uh, or my production team for getting this uh, over to me. Now before I get started, uh, let me say that yes, I'm indoors and I've got a hat on. I saw someone actually give an update on some things that had a hat on and they talked about a hat on, having their hat on indoors so I figured if they can do it, shucks, I can do it as well. But let me tell you why I'm wearing this hat so that you'll know. Now I don't know if you can see this, of course I've got my same old uh, clean head here, but I've got some, a patch of hair. See that? I don't know if you can see that. I don't know if you can see that patch of hair in the back. I hope you could. But anyway, uh, what I'm doing is I'm growing that patch of hair for my grandkids. I'm going to have that shaped into the form of an eagle uh, and, uh, and spring it on them when we have our, our weekly uh, Zoom call uh, on Sunday afternoon. So I think it'll be a little thick enough that I can can sort of carve it out. And actually, my wife doesn't know it, but she's going to be the one that actually has to do the carving. I hadn't told her that yet. But I want to spring it on them. I'm sure they'll get a kick out of it. That's what you, know, that's what you do with grandkids. They love everything you do because you spoil them and then you can give them back to their, their parents. So but that's, that's what that's all about. But anyway, that's why I'm wearing the hat. But let's get back to this training. Uh, this is the first of a four-part series of training that uh, me and my team are doing at Elevate to Impact. Uh, and, and, and really, this training is designed to give you back something that God has already given to you, and that is your time. And so, uh, I know the question has to be, well, what do you mean you're going to give me back my time? Well, I'm glad you asked. In this COVID-19 coronavirus atmosphere, our lives have been turned upside down in a short period of time, in just the span of a few weeks. Things have really been up, turned upside down. And, and our world actually has been confined and restricted to our homes. I mean, this is the limit of our home, I mean, of, of our activities right now, our lives. There, were, there was once a time when we did certain things at our home, and then there were certain things that we did at school, and then there were certain things we did at work, and after that, there were certain things we did when we played. But now, all of that has been confined and constricted into doing everything at home. And that's a different place to be. And that certainly uh, is a recipe for disorder. It's a recipe for anxiety. It's a recipe for disunity. It's a recipe for a whole lot of negative things to happen. And so, and we, and we know that we need Jesus to help us get through all of that. But what we want to do here today is to start, again, the first of four, a four part series, to start giving you some practical tools to help you eliminate the anxiety, eliminate the, the, the lack of feeling that you're in control of your schedule, eliminate the disorder. I mean, these are proven tools that we know can help you to do that. And, and I'm, I'm just happy to be a part of being able to bring these, uh, bring these tools to you. And, and frankly, this, this training, um, you know, I've been doing training like this for uh, more than 20 years. Of course, my background is in law, and many of you know that. And so, uh, and I've worked with a number of businesses, helping them to grow and get established and, and uh, excel and do great things from idea to IPO. Uh, it's kind of the way I like to say it sometimes. Uh, work with the Chamber of Commerce, done a lot of uh, training for them. Uh, but again, I'm really happy to have this opportunity to bring the same type of training to you because I had been getting a number of requests to do this kind of training uh, because of all the things that I've been hearing about with everything being uh, so somewhat chaotic in people's lives. And I know a number of you already have things well under control and that's great and that's wonderful. But then there are always some additional tools out there that I think can be helpful to people 
And this one that I'm going to share with you today, I know it's going to help move the needle for you in terms of getting back into control of how you manage your schedule, how you manage your time, and how you handle your priorities going forward. So again, I'm just happy to be a part of, of helping you to do this. Now, there are a couple of things I want to mention as we, as we go through this. So there are uh, the tools that I want to make available to you, as I mentioned, including this four-part series. Uh, no charge for these. There's, everything's free, not selling anything. Uh, I want you to uh, feel free to, to access the things once we, you know, we get your, information, your, your email address. We can send you access to, to, uh, to be able to access most of this. After the four-part series is done, you'll be able to access all the information. Again, none of it is going is, is to cost you anything as long as you want to stay with it. You actually can also get a copy of my book. Uh, it's called Receive and Achieve Now, 15 Bible Secrets on How to Find Joy, Success, and Abundance in Small Business. I wrote this book about six, seven years ago, uh, and uh, I've just always given copies of it away and given the training away for the most part uh, anyway, but I'm happy to, to, uh, to reintroduce this, uh, which I haven't, I'm not really reintroducing it because I've been training and using, and using it uh, since I uh, published it, but it's also been a useful tool uh, that, that, uh, that I'm, I'm happy to make available to you uh, as a result of this, and that's also free of charge. When I get your email address, I'll send you a copy of this. It's, ava it's available on Amazon, but you don't have to buy it. We're not talking about buying anything here uh, today. So, so, uh, so we'll be able to go ahead and jump right into some of these training. Part of what I'm talking about today, this training is in the book, and, uh, and so you can read that and refresh um, some of the things that we talk about here. Now there is a catch, and you always have to say, well, I knew there had to be a catch. Yes, there is one catch, and that catch is that as long as you're taking advantage of the, of the, the program or any of the trainings that, that we do, that I do and my team that we do, we want you to do an act of kindness. You have to do one act, of, at least one act of kindness a week. I know that you do many more over, than that over the course of a week, but we want you to do an act of kindness. And once you do that act of kindness, we want you to go and join our Facebook group, a private Facebook group. It's called The Achievers. And, uh, and then post what you've done uh, in the community there. And, uh, and in that community, you're going to find a lot of support for what you're doing. Uh, also, you'll get access to uh, special trainings that we'll do, the monthly calls that we do. Uh, and, uh, and you'll be able to answer or, or have answered any question that you may have about your business, starting your business, running your business, growing your business, getting through some financial challenges with your business. And these are certainly challenging times for people who are in business. And there are a lot of things that you can do to prepare to, as, we, as you get ready to exit on the other side of, of this coronavirus, whenever that's going to be, and we really don't know when that's gonna be. But you wanna be prepared and you've got access to a whole bunch of, uh, a lot of free information and access to, uh, to get those questions answered uh, if you, uh, once you go ahead and, and become a part of The Achievers uh, over there. The Achievers is kind of a, a take on the name of the book, Receive and Achieve, because you are an achiever and we know you're gonna continue to achieve great things. Now, let's get ready to dive right into this, this training, but I wanna do, give you one little example before we dive into the training and and as you can see on this board back here, uh, this is what we're going to be uh, imparting with you today and, uh, and the tool that we're going to be giving. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that. But before I do that, I want to show you this. And uh, most of you know, and I'm not going to even say the millennials don't know what this is, but most of you know what this is. And uh, if I were in class and a school teacher, I would say, what is this class? And then I would hear everyone say, this is an hourglass. An hourglass, this is a, a component of how people used to tell time back in the day. Back in the very day, way back in the day. Uh, but this hourglass is, uh, is something that, that it, obviously it represents time. And the top part of the hourglass is the future. And the bottom part of the hourglass is the past. And, and if you look at an hourglass this way, since we're talking about time, I think you can see the sand falling through this uh, hourglass as we, as I'm talking here. I believe you can see it. But um, the point is about the future and the past. 
we are you you're unable to reach into the past, into the future and touch any aspect of the future and and by the same token you have no control over the past once the past is done it's it's just that it's the past you have nothing else to do it's just a trail that you've left behind you can't affect it one iota but what you do have control over that god has given you 100 percent control over is now and now you're represented by this is you but but this is this is your future this is your past and right here is is you right now where this little uh it pinches and the and the time and the sand falls from the future to the past you do have the moment of now where you can affect what happens in the future but there are certain actions that you have to take that you must take in order to affect the future what we don't often realize is that our destiny, God has put more of our destiny in our own hands than we realize. Yes, our destiny becomes our destiny, but what that des destiny ultimately is, is determined by what actions we take or don't take on the time that we do have, the moment of now. So please keep that in mind as we're talking about. Right now, today, you have the opportunity to affect and plant seeds for what your future is going to be like and what it's going to be about. So that's almost all I'm going to say about uh, the hourglass for, for our discussions right now. So moving right along though, uh, let me pull up my next high-tech graphic. And as soon as I find it. Okay, here it is. And these are the scriptures that are covering our discussion today. If you can read that, I'll read it for you. It says, and these are, this is James 4.14, why you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are but a mist that appears for a little while, then vanishes. That's James 4.14. And then the other guiding scripture for us today is, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. That's Psalms 90.12, uh, the NIV version. And, and in both of these scriptures, uh, God's Word is telling us that we need to have a sense of urgency about the things that we go about doing in our lives while we're on this earth. I mean, and, and, and that we should be wise about that, knowing that your days are numbered. You know, the average person has about 29,000 days on this earth. And so what that means, and that's about 80, age 80 or so, and there's some, for some people it's longer than that, and some people it's less. Uh, but, but the question is, what are you going to do with the days that you've got remaining? There's nothing you can do about the ones that are past. But the question is, what are you going to do about the ones going forward? And what kind of urgency do you have about your life in terms of dealing with those things uh, that you're going to do uh, going forward? So keeping those two scriptures in mind, that's sort of guiding us uh, in our discussion today. Now, let me give you a little history about this chart that's behind me and a couple of things that I want you to do as we, uh, as we delve into this. Now, so, now, I want you to keep in mind that uh, this training is designed to give you some tools today by the time we finish that you will have to be on in front of you that you will have that you can actually put into use. So but let me tell you a little bit about the history of where this, this training came from in this chart. Uh, there was a Dr. Stephen Covey uh, who passed away several years ago who has written a number of great books uh, on time management, on leadership, and he is among a number of leadership experts and gurus that I've studied and I have some some wonderful uh, gurus and, and 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 I'll call them mentors uh, virtual mentors that I that I've adopted uh, Dr. John Maxwell is another one who is absolutely terrific in terms of what he is he teaches uh, folks but I so I've studied some of the best in the world studied under some of the best uh, and so uh, and what I have found is that this particular time management tool is if not the best one of the best uh, out there that, that can be used to help give you a visual and give you actual hands-on experience in terms of getting control of your schedule, having, a, having visibility into how to handle things, and positioning yourself so that you are acting on the task that you have as opposed to those tasks acting on you and you having to react to them. So this is all about putting you back in control of your schedule and giving you some sem semblance of order in terms of going about doing the things that you do every day. So now, 
two more things I need you to do before we actually start talking about the chart and the, and the specifics of the training. Well, three things. Number one, I want you to pause the video. Not yet. Not yet. You won't hear what I've got to say if you pause it right now. But anyway, that's my little joke. But, but I do want you to pause the video, and I want you to do two things. The first thing is I want you to make a list of everything that you've got to do starting today and then going to tomorrow and the rest of the week. Every task that you feel you've got to perform. Every task. You don't have to leave anything out. Don't be selective. List every task on a sheet of paper. Now, and I've done that here. Now, these tasks that I've got listed are really sort of make-believe tasks uh, because I couldn't use my own real personal ones. I didn't mind using them, but they've got confidence. I've you know, got clients' information and tasks and things that I'm performing. So, um, uh, so I made these up with the help of my wife, and and so these tasks are. Some of them may even apply to you, but but just go ahead and do your list. Do whatever that list, you know, whatever you have to do and make it personal to you. Now, the other thing I want you to do is to, once you pause the video, is I want you to make a chart like this. And I want you to put the quads in. I call this the quad, the quads. It's basically for quadrants. And you're going to have four quadrants. You will just draw a big square and then put a big X in it to divide it into four quadrants. And then you'll have quad one, quad two, quad three, and quad four. There, those four quadrants, and that's all I want you to write in there at this particular time. You're gonna fill some things in there when we go through it, and this is a, a, a mock-up here of what those quads look like here. And we're gonna talk about what goes into each one of those quads as we go along. So go ahead, you can pause the video right now, and then, uh, when you get these two items done, and it's important to do this, to set aside some time to do this, because I want you to have an actual tool in your hand so that by the time you finish this video the first time, you're going to have some, you'll have a tool and you'll have a weapon in your hand to help you to bring some things uh, into order. Okay? So go ahead and pause the video, and I'll be right back. Okay, back. Now, I know some of you didn't pause the video, so you really should go ahead and pause the video. Didn't know I was watching you that closely, did you? But that's okay. At some point in time, you can still watch it all the way through, but please, at some point, I want you to, to track what we're doing because this can be so very helpful uh, for you, your family, your coworkers, uh, a whole lot of people in terms of bringing order to a lot of things that you're doing uh, out there. So, now... So let's go ahead and dive into what these quadrants, these four quadrants are. And we'll start with quadrant, quadrant one over here. Now quadrant one, and now, so get your pen ready because I do want you to write this part down. Under quadrant one, I want you to write urgent and important. Now don't use up all the space in the, in the box there, but just write urgent and important. And keep in mind what we're talking about. Things that are urgent, and I'll, I'll more clearly define that in a minute, but also things that are important. Things that are important to your goals. And remember, all of your activities should be about goals that you have. Now, we're not going to go through the goal setting exercise in this training, and, and uh, none of these trainings actually go. We're talking about time management and priority management in the four trainings that I'll be doing for you in this series. But, but goal setting is a different, a different training. But all of your activities should be moving you towards certain goals that you have to achieve certain things. It may re relate, relate to your job. It may relate to school. It may relate to a home, your honey-do list. Whatever it is, you've got things that you have to do, whether you've written out formal goals or not. I always love for people to write out, write out their own personal mission statement, for example. We won't get into that right now today. But, but all these activities have to be leading to something. These activities have to be leading to something because they are activities that are important to you. So keep that in mind as we talk about these. Let me get over here this way. <clears throat> so again, urgent and important. Go ahead and write that down. I've, I've talked long enough for you to have urgent and important down. Now that's quad one. Now quad two 
is also important, but it is not urgent. Things in this one are not urgent. Just keep that in mind. I want you to keep the distinction of what, I'm, what we're defining as we go through this. Quad one was urgent, hot. It's, it's something needs to be done right away. But it's also important. If anything is important, that means it's important to you and your personal goals, your personal development, your job, your home. Something that is important, very, very important to you. And again, quad two is also, it covers things that are very, very important to you, such as uh, important, but it's not urgent. There's not a fire. You don't have to put out a fire to get it done. Okay? Quad two is that way. And I will go ahead and give you a little hint here. Quad two is where you want to operate out of. And we'll talk about why you want to operate out of those, out of quad two, in just a moment. Now, let's go down to quadrant number three. Quadrant three covers areas that are urgent, but not important. Now, keep that in mind what I'm saying. These things are urgent. They're pressing on you. There's something you've got to get done, but they're not important. Which means that you've got to get this done, but it's somebody else's agenda. Or it's some, some type of interruption, up interruption that's urgent that's keeping you from doing some of the things that you need to do, that you need to be doing. So quad three is urgent, but not important. Okay? And we'll review these again, so you'll have, you'll have a moment to, to, uh, to get some clarity about these. And then finally, quad four, quadrant four, is not urgent and not important. And I'll bet you can guess right now what are some of the, some of the things that need to go on this list that may be on your list. They're not urgent. They're not pressing on you. There's no demand for you to do anything. And these activities are not important. They're not important to your goals. They're not going to move the needle for you in terms of reaching any goals that you have relating to your job, your home life, or whatever. Not urgent and not important. So this top list, these two top categories are important. These two below here deal with urgent. And the important relates to you and the urgent relates to someone else. More than like urgent and not important relates to someone else. Now let's kind of let's talk about a little more detail of what, what goes into quad one, which is the urgent but not important. So let's talk about the kind of task that you've got on your list over here. This is your list. You've got it already laid out. What on this list that you laid out is going to go into this quadrant that's urgent and important? Well, the types of things that go over there are things that are crisis management type of issues. You know, are you putting out fires? Right here, I've got this list. And these are in no particular order. They're all because they all relate to the same thing. This is where you put out. Do you have situations where you're constantly putting out fires? Or you've got a fire to put out tomorrow or tonight even or next week that you've got something burning that you should have already done? You know, hot deadlines. What kind of deadline? You've got some deadlines pressing on you. Those are things that are hot and pressing. Pressing problems that are important to your personal goals. This is important to you, your family, your job, your business. Certain tasks that you have to get done. And there are probably things right now that you're thinking about, like, oh gosh, I have got to get that done. I know I've got to get that done. And you want to list those things here so that you can have a plan of attack when you go after it. Now, let's go to quadrant two. And let's see what kinds of things that are important but not urgent. Now, remember I said, that quadrant two is where you want to operate out of. When you get your task on this list, you want to operate out of quadrant two. Very important to remember that. Now let's talk about what happens over in quadrant two. Okay, in quadrant two, you've got tasks that are calm, productive activities going on in quadrant two. So if you've got things on your list that, that you can calmly put over here, that you have time to work on, these are, the, these are the tasks that you want to put in this particular quadrant. You know, you want to put, these are, these are crisis prevention tasks. So, if there's a task here, and if you work on it, and if, yourself, if you're disciplined enough, then it never gets over here. 
into this hot area. Because you don't, you don't, this is a high stress area. I often write these in red just for my own purposes but when they're over here. But I, I didn't do it here today, but I just, oftentimes I use the red pen to write them down because I know they're all hot. And, I'm, and I have them. I have them. I try to avoid them, but I have them. So I can't say, I can't act like I don't have those either. But I have those. But, but oftentimes it's because I didn't do something over here in the planning phase that allowed that to get hot over here. So, so crisis prevention, relationship building, Depending on what it is, you've got time when you're operating on things over here to build relationships, you know, to do what you need to do on those. And so uh, that's one of the things. You, you can do planning. You can do vision perspective. You know, execution on very productive things. Control. You are in control. You're reacting to things. Things are not acting on you. You're acting on those things so that they never get to a point where they become a crisis to be pressing on you and to create stress and pressure. So keep that in mind. Self-discipline requires a lot of discipline to work in this space, but this is a nice, calm space to work in. Okay, let's move on to quadrant four. I'm sorry, quadrant three. Quadrant three. Okay, we said this was urgent, but not important. Remember that now. It's urgent, which means it's pressing. And that's where people get confused sometimes. Just because something is urgent, <clears throat> doesn't mean it's important to you. Yeah, it's a hot item that you've got to do, but it's not moving the needle as far as pressing, moving you toward your goals. It's generally somebody else's goals. It's interruptions that you've got to go run and do something for somebody else. You know, emails or, or some things. You, with email, you're responding to somebody else's agenda most often, unless they're responding to something that you've sent out. Uh, meetings. There are sometimes that are meetings that are worthless that are not moving the needle, but how did you get stuck in this meeting? Or somebody, you have a supervisor or maybe a boss that calls meetings unnecessarily and is not doing anything to, to, to help move you toward your goal even on your job there, even though the boss or the supervisor may have called the meeting. But you need to categorize that so you can try to minimize those. You know, other people's agendas. You know, somebody asking you to do something that um, that's that's this totally benefits them, and you're trying to be helpful. I'm not saying don't be friendly or do some certain things, but just know where that fits in terms of taking your time away to do that. And then, because oftentimes you feel victimized and out of control when you with things that affect you here, and knowing that can help you to bring some sense of order so that you don't feel victimized by having to do these tasks. You may be wondering why am I always feeling like I'm being taken advantage of? Well, going through this exercise and listing those things can help you to recognize that much more ready. And then the final quadrant, which is not urgent and not important. Okay? So this one over here, quad three, was not urgent, was urgent, pressing, but not important. Not important to you, but it was important to somebody else. Quadrant four is not urgent and not important, which means what is the use? What use does this have for you at all, period? You know, this is trivia busy work. You know, just mindlessly going through your emails. Remember, emails can be addictive. You know, looking at your smartphone can be addictive. You have to recognize that, you know, why am I so, why do I have to you know, sleep with my phone and, and, and scroll through it? I'm laying in bed trying to scroll through, mindlessly scrolling through and looking for news feeds or things that when you should be resting and could be resting. So you have to learn to disconnect from that, 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 uh, that email, that cell phone, that you know, social media, you know, there's social media. You want to get to a place where you use social media. Social media does not use you. That's one of the biggest problems that people have. They allow social media to use them instead of them using social media for things to promote positive things that are out there. Oftentimes, there are things that are negative. Not always, but they're, oftentimes there are. They are. They're time wasters. You know, uh, pleasant activities. It might be a pleasant activity. So now some activities that are pleasant, you know, they can be you can be getting rest. Rest is important. Recreation is important. So that doesn't mean doesn't mean it's mindless, but in the context of moving you toward your goals, you can't always use that as an excuse to say, well, I'm getting some rest, or I'm, you know, I'm trying to relax. Relaxing is good, but goofing off, simply goofing off or irresponsible activities. 
So there are things on your list here that will fit into this category. So now, 